What's happening, everybody? Welcome. You're watching or listening to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are going to tackle the subject, our collective belief of the, how did we phrase it? The myth that poor self-defense is worse than no self-defense. Ooh, this is a claim a lot of people make on the internet. And disclosure, I might get riled up here. So if you don't like that sort of conversation, you might not want to stick around or just be ready to turn it off, right? Like just, just fair warning. If you're new to the show, maybe somebody shared it with you. Maybe you've been invited to collectively hate what we say. Welcome. You might want to check out whistlekick.com, where everything we do is in support of the traditional martial arts. One of the things over there is our store. We sell some things from training programs, apparel, event admissions, and more. And you can use the code PODCAST15 to save 15% on just about anything over there. This show, Martial Arts Radio, gets its own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Every episode we've ever done is available for free, and it's all to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial arts of the world. It's our goal. It's why we do what we do. We are passionate about what we do, and if you want to support us, you could share an episode, you could buy a book or leave a review, but the three things we ask you to keep in mind, we have a Patreon. That's one of the most direct ways that support what we do here. Patreon.com slash whistlekick if you're watching Andrews being goofy and silly, which is why we are friends. We've got the discount code, as I said, podcast15. And if you want the entirety of all the things that you could do to support us in our mission, you can go to whistlekick.com slash family. You have to type it in. It is not linked anywhere. If you're family, you understand why. All right, Andrew. Okay. The root of this is that quite often, the feedback, the comments that we see on videos of martial arts online, whether it's on social media, YouTube, websites, whatever, people will say, that's not good. That's going to get someone hurt. Or to say it more directly, that person has a false sense of confidence in their skills and they're going to get themselves into trouble. There's this idea that somehow someone can learn a elements of martial arts and be less prepared for a self-defense situation than if they had not done anything at all. Yep. Am I framing that right? Is that yep, your? I, I, yeah, you you are framing it correctly, and and I see it quite a bit. Um, I have seen videos online of of quote reaction videos to let's watch this self-defense video and 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 basically make fun of it as to why it wouldn't work, or. Uh, I've seen videos where let's watch this uh, self-defense tutorial and let's try and actually do them. Let's see if they actually work. And they actually go so far as to actually try them to see if they work. Um, And it's kind of become bigger and bigger in the online YouTube world. And a lot of that is because we live in a time where we react more strongly to things that we dislike. We like to gang up and hate and and throw shade or whatever words you want to use. And when we're talking about a subject that people feel skilled or qualified in, it becomes very uh, um, self-serving to point to someone else and say, well, they don't know what they're doing. They're not as good as I am, because that's what they're saying. If I watch a video, and especially if I comment on a video, say, that wouldn't work, that's BS, whatever, I'm saying, you know less than I do, yeah. and that makes me better. Yeah. And that's not just martial arts. That's anything. Sure. Right? I see it once in a while. I see like some home improvement stuff pop up. Um, there's a flock of blue jays flying around my window. I'm sorry, it's distracting. It's, it's like four of them. I find it to be ridiculous. Because let's really break that down. I spent some time learning some self-defense skills. That 
made me so unprepared as to I would be better off not. I don't think anybody out there is going to argue the fact that some things are more effective than other things. Absolutely. Some methods of training are more effective than other methods of training. More time training will yield better <laughs> results given the first two statements, right? Are we we're on the same page there? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. There might be one weirdo out there who's like, well, I don't, well, that's fine. I'm not, we're, we're not talking to that one weirdo. We're talking to the general collection of martial artists who engage with our content. <clears throat> Here's my problem. The arrogance that is required to make the statement that someone else's form and format of training is so bad as to be worse than no training is I'm going to do something I've never done on this show before. It's fucking ridiculous. And anyone who engages in that behavior is also fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, I liken it to my thoughts on quote McDojos and and you know people that that do not know I've gone on the record publicly on other podcasts and saying that I hate and I don't use the word hate very often I hate the word McDojo why I, I, I hate it because it it has been brought it, it is now being used to be anything that a particular person thinks is bad yep. right and it is most often used to belittle other martial artists and in, in saying often in this context of self-defense stuff or what they're learning, like the students at that school, that's a McDojo, like the, they, they give out belts and what they're learning is so bad. And now here's how we relate it to this episode, that the self-defense that they're learning will make them worse on the street, that they're going to hurt themselves because they don't really know what they're doing. They, they, what they're being taught is bullshit and they, they, they would have been better off not doing anything. And I disagree with that statement vehemently. Here's the first place. And I think this is the most obvious place that we can poke a hole, a very large hole in that argument. Confidence. Absolutely. Every time you approach the psychology of defense, self-defense, violent behavior, victims, how, whatever angle we're coming in on it. The number one thing that is related to the person, it's not their skill at blocking or evading. It's not their knowledge of where or how to kick. It's not their speed or strength. It's their confidence. In fact, this is so relevant that there have been studies, and we've talked about this once or twice on the show, where they have taken perpetrators of violent crime and shown them videos of people walking down the street and asked them to identify who would they who would they attack, who would they go after. Guess what? It, they they get it. They're in common. They pick the same people. Yep. Because they present themselves as victims. If I spend six to 12 months learning awkward self-defense techniques, poorly taught, and I really don't know anything different, but I think I did, and I think I'm better prepared, I will carry myself better. Now, might it be a huge difference? No. But we're not talking about the argument that doesn't make you much better we're talking about the argument that makes it worse. Yeah, yeah. All we have to prove to blow up this ridiculous argument is that it doesn't make you worse. Confidence makes it better. Absolutely. There's yeah. our first attack on the argument. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the concept of, you know, what, what students are learning at that school is, is garbage. Like they should come here and train here. Well, here's the reality. If the students over there are happy with what they're learning, whether it is quote unquote effective or not, if what they're learning 
it brings them joy and they are happy. Who am I to say they're wrong, right? And they are learning stuff that you brought up will make them more confident. So they will tend to carry themselves in a different way from someone who has no training whatsoever. Not everyone trains for the same reasons. I'm not aware of any martial artist who doesn't have betterment of their self-defense skills on the list, mm -hmm. but it is not the top of everyone's list. It is not the top of my list. Yep. The number one reason I train is not self-defense. It took me a very long time to feel like I would be like I would have a reasonably better chance to defend myself on the street. It was decades. Mm -hmm. I was fine with that. Yeah. Because I knew I would have some better chance, but I'm I am small. I've always been small. But I train for many other reasons, most of which we've talked about on this show. Okay. Here's another place that we come in at, and you you brought it up. This idea that it's it's bad because it's bad in comparison. There's always a comparison. There's no objective way to point to something and say that it's crappy. It can only be crappy in comparison to another thing. What is what do the people who make these arguments always compare it to? The thing that they do. I yep. have never seen any of these folks say what this person does sucks. What I do sucks less, but what that person does over there is much better. So we should all be doing that. Never seen that happen before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So again, I come back to it is fucking arrogant to say what I do is correct. What that person does is incorrect. Now, I recognize not everyone's saying correct versus incorrect. I recognize that most of these arguments are bad versus good. How much experience do you have with what that person is being taught? In most cases, it's virtually none. It's a single yeah. video of one to two minutes. Guess what? You can find plenty of videos of me not doing a good job. If you film me learning something new or at a seminar, hey, guess what? I teach seminars. Sometimes I screw stuff up even in the seminars I'm teaching based on the material that I put together. None of us are perfect. So if you boil things down to that, what it's equivalent of a soundbite, you're always going to find a reason to drag somebody. How does that make anything better? Yeah. Yep. And the other one that I see sometimes is there will be a video of some self-defense thing and people will be like, that's dumb. That would never work. Well, here's a little story that I'm going to tell. I, story time. Story time. Story time with uh, Andrew. I have in the past gotten food stuck in my throat. Mm. The very first time it happened, uh, they had to put me under anesthesia to go in and pull the pull the food out of my throat. I basically I didn't chew my food enough. Uh, I was in a hurry and I was in a rush and I wasn't it didn't clog off my airway. I could still breathe. I could still talk. I just couldn't swallow literally mm. nothing couldn't swallow water. Nothing was going down. It was wow. completely st stuck. And when they pulled it out, they let me know that, you know, it has expanded your esophagus. And so it is more likely to happen to you now because it's happened once. So it has happened to me three or four times. Mm -hmm. And I've only had to go to the hospital a couple of times. But here's the story that I need to, that it's going to relate, guys. You got to just bear with me. I trust you. I went to the, it was Thanksgiving Day a number of years ago. I'd just taken the turkey out of the oven. It's, and I'm like, oh, it's so good. And I start to carve it up and I like, it was there. It's so good. And I put a piece of turkey <laughs> in my mouth and it got stuck in my throat. And I said to my ex-wife, I was like, um, yeah, I, I can't get it out. Like, we're going to have to go to the hospital. And so we went to the emergency room and uh, the doctor said, okay, well, we're going to, we're going to start you with a muscle relaxant and the, you know, it's going to, we're going to do you in, with an IV. So you, we don't want to put you under if we don't have to. So they put the IV in me and they're like, it's a, supposed to be a muscle relaxant. We're going to let it take its time. And then hopefully it'll just pass down on its own and you'll be fine. So they give it to me about five, 10 minutes later, she comes in, says, here's a glass of water. See if you see if it'll go down. And it went down 
And she, when I said, yeah, it, she's like, really, it worked? And then I said, yeah, it did. She said, we try this on everyone, it never works. Mm. This is the first time it's ever worked. But we always try it because it doesn't hurt to try it. Mm. And, you know, it, it's amazing it worked. Well, that dumb technique that that person does, like let's say it's a, you know, your wrists are bound and you know you do this thing to get them undone. Well, that's so dumb, that'll never work. Well, maybe it doesn't work 99.9% .9 of the time, but maybe there's that 1% of the time that maybe it will work. And would you rather them try something that might not work or just sit there and do nothing? Well, remember, remember, if we're only gonna do the things that work most of the time, everyone knows like, three punches and two kicks and that's it yeah and that's all we do all the time yeah that's really boring how many people are going to stick with that how many people are going to get better at that exactly None. like yep. two martial arts would be dead so at least that quote dumb thing that they saw in the video that they try maybe it doesn't work but maybe they're the one percent person that you know what it does work for them how are they worse off for having tried it? Sometimes learning that a thing doesn't work often, but being able to understand it is a good thing. This is what this is the argument that comes up against forms. And I've seen people make the same argument that we're, we're attacked. Spending your time on forms is a waste of time. It makes you less prepared because you're never going to do those techniques in that way. Well, it's spoken by someone who doesn't understand what the a form is and why we train it. Forms help me understand my body. When I do application with someone else, helps me understand how my body relates to somebody else. It's safe. I don't have to train it in a way where I'm panicked that I'm getting punched in the face. I can also train strength and reaction time and speed and a whole bunch of other things using forms. Yep, absolutely. It's a good story. I, I, I knew pieces of that. I didn't know the whole thing. Yeah. You think this is inevitable? Is is this is this a a sign of martial artists trying? I can't even form the sentence. Let me try. Is this a sign of martial artists being so passionate about what they do that they are trying to elevate the entire industry by, you know, um, iron you know iron sharpens iron. Or is this a sign of the times where nobody can support what anyone else does? Because if there's another good way of doing something, it could mean that there's a better way of doing something than they already do it. I think it's more the latter than not the former. And here's yeah. why. When I see the reaction videos of people talking about it, they, they don't often say, that the, they don't often say that it's dumb what is being taught they say they should do it this way they should do it my way mm -hmm. so i tend to see it more as people want to put other stuff down to bring their stuff up as opposed to saying and even if it was couched in such a way that um we we don't think that this way would work here are some options you could do but it's never that way. It's you should do it this way instead. It makes a definitive statement as opposed to an open-ended statement. What I find interesting is that there seems to be a bit of a bell curve on this related to time training. Brand new students are running around generally, trashing what other people do. People who've been training 30, 40, 50 years are generally not running around trashing what other people do. That's a good, really good observation that I had never thought of. So we had a conversation off air where I referred to someone that, that you know, that I know a little bit as a baby black belt. Yep. Right. Not baby in terms of age, but someone who time you know, in. has trained six, eight years. Yep. Yeah. Time in. Basically. Yep. You know, certainly earned their black belt, certainly deserves it but does not have enough time with other people and understanding themselves and how they relate to martial arts and martial arts relates to them. 
And not that we were talking about specifically this, but there was an element of, well, this way that I do it is right. And I don't know that I can agree with other people doing it differently as being acceptable. And the word you used was valid. Yep. Yep. Right. Yes. It, yeah. You know, I hadn't thought of that. And, and, and I think it's important to know, like we're using the term baby black belt. It is not a derogatory way. It is, it is just meant in terms of like, they haven't been a black belt for that long. Yeah. It's, it's um, same way that in all the vampire shows, you know, it's a baby vampire. Yeah, just yeah, yeah exactly. Um, you know, that, that's a, that is a good point though, that, you know, someone who has been training a lot longer in the arts, I would say as a general rule, tends to be a little more open and accepting of other things that's yeah i think it's two pronged there i think they're more open and i think they're also far more, less interested in what other people are doing because they realize it doesn't impact them because yeah. here here's i i will push back on on this and say why do you care this you know what even if it does let's pretend i completely disagreed with myself and I would say, you know what? Yeah, so what? They're more likely to get hurt. So what? Well, it gives martial artists a bad name. Only because you're saying shit about it. Yeah. The general population isn't running around going, what are, what are martial artists saying to other martial artists? The only reason they even know is because we post stuff publicly showing us tearing each other down yeah good point i'm so sick of it mm -hmm. we did a whole episode about that martial artists are the reason martial arts isn't bigger what episode was that just a couple weeks ago Last 743 week. 745 somewhere in there yep i i don't know if if there's more to say or if we're beating a dead horse at this point what do you think? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think we, we both have come down pretty strongly on the same side, which is mm -hmm. unsurprising. Yep. Um, I mean, we can continue to rant, but I think we've I think we've gotten our point across. Ranting for the sake of ranting is pointless. Doesn't make anybody's life better. You know, maybe people enjoyed us ranting because it's not a thing that we do. Yeah. But it, I here's what I here's what I'm going to recommend don't participate in this if you see someone post material and you your initial reaction is to think critically that creates an opportunity to ask a question why hmm. there's a gentleman that i am and social media friends with we've never had a conversation but i follow his accounts on his account on tiktok he follows mine he puts up material of him working through some things. At no point has he claimed a level of experience or rank or knowledge. He doesn't claim to be a teacher. He's putting himself out there saying, this is what I'm doing. And he gets so much hate. Hmm. There's no reason for it. Yeah. We are our own worst enemies. And if you want martial arts to advance, one of the surest ways for it to advance is to get more participation. The more people doing a thing, the better the thing gets. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. It doesn't matter. Resist that. Think of the worst way to train martial arts that you can imagine. More people training in that way means some of them will want to do something differently mm -hmm. and they will move on to something else but what is most important is that people have a positive experience in their training especially early on and one of the surest ways to stop them from having a positive experience is to tell them that they have made a terrible decision training yes. in that way at that place and that they should just stop or they're wrong or because we live in a time where everyone is so critical people are terrified of making any decision and so instead they will make no decision yeah people are so afraid of making the wrong decision they will make no decision it is overwhelming it is exhausting to think about all the different options of all the places you could train for most of us and 
sometimes you just gotta you just gotta start yeah you know there's the expression rising tide raises all ships right yep. um i would rather students go train at at the school across the street even if it's a and i hate using this term quote unquote mcdojo in some people's eyes even if they go to train there because there are possible there are chances that those students will go there not like it and come to my school instead because yep. they're totally different they train two totally different ways and they like what they see at my school better yep. great but if they don't get involved at all there is less of a chance they're going to come to my school and vice versa students may come to my school and not like what i do if they're happy training over at that school across the street great more power to you i'm just happy you're training because yeah. you will learn stuff at that school and be happy at that school and not at my school great every school every style every training methodology is not equal for all people yeah but they are all equally viable how do we know because they exist exactly. if nobody found value in this school over here doing things in this way it wouldn't exist yep. that method of training would die out absolutely so to round this out in a non-ranty way if you are someone who feels so strongly about the way other people train i will all but guarantee 99.9 .9 chance suggest that you need to spend more time looking at yourself and your own training and most importantly there is a lesson that you have missed in your training and that lesson is the more time you spend worried about other people the more likely you're going to get uh, a punch upside the back of the head or sensei shinai or whatever it is right like you, have you had that experience i think a lot <laughs> of us if you trained as like an adolescent or teenager you probably know what it's like to be so worried about what somebody's doing two spots over that you get a, a something upside the back of the head. That lesson is not simply for while you're in class. Correct. Worry about you because you can't, you can't change what other people are doing. Invest your time modeling better behavior and better training because you do have complete control over that and let other people discover what you are doing. And lastly, to any of the trolls or haters that made it this deep in this episode, I never see videos from any of you. If you're gonna take shots at people and what they do, and you're not willing to put up video of yourself, your opinion is as irrelevant as I could imagine. Absolutely, amen. I want to thank everybody for listening or watching. Remember, we're all over social media. These videos air on YouTube. We do two episodes each and every week under the guise of connecting, educating, and entertaining. Hopefully, we checked all three of those boxes for you today. If you want to support us, you can make a purchase at whistlekick.com with the code PODCAST15. You can check out the Patreon. It starts at $2 a month. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. Ooh, fancy wipe. <laughs> fancy manual wipe andrew uh you can also check out the family page whistlekick.com slash family we've got training programs i teach seminars we've got all kinds of ways that we can connect with you so don't be afraid to reach out andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com i'm jeremy at whistlekick.com until next time train, train hard, hard smile, smile and have, have a great, great day, day.